Hello, this is Chip McGee, Superintendent of Schools here in Pelham, and uh, I'm excited for another edition of Pelham School District Today. Um, I'm uh, joined today uh, by Nicole Bridge. She is our math coach at uh, Pelham Elementary School. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and um, I'm particularly excited because we're going to talk about uh, uh, teaching and learning, uh, what's happening in the elementary schools, and mathematics. Um, and so, could you just start by, uh, I know I know we know each other already, but just kind of introduce yourself. Like, so, you're new this year. Where were you before? Tell us yeah. about your background. Yeah, so um, I've had a really interesting career, and I guess life in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, I started my teaching career um, as a middle school math teacher, so mm -hmm. I worked with seventh graders for a number of years, and then... Was that here in uh, New Hampshire? No, so that was in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. I'm originally from Western Pennsylvania. Western Pennsylvania, all right, I'm gonna keep track. Yeah, okay, go for it. My first teaching job took me to Houston, mm -hmm. um, and okay. then after that, my, my life and the person who would later become my husband mm -hmm. um, took me to Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. <laughs> where I worked as both a middle school teacher but also an interventionist. Mm -hmm. um, What's that mean? It means that I worked with struggling learners and okay. kind of gave them uh, additional math instruction. Sometimes mm -hmm. it was pre-teaching, sometimes it was re-teaching, mm -hmm. but to support their struggles. So that's a lot like a part of what our middle school math coach does. Yes. Has that intervention role as well. Definitely. Right. Okay. Definitely. And then um, life took us to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm, I love Minneapolis. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, very cold. Cold. <laughs> Uh, and I worked at the district office as the middle school math coordinator for Minneapolis Public Schools. And I got oh to do gosh. yeah, a lot more professional learning with, mm -hmm. with adults. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the first time dipping my toes there. Yep. Um, and then a little bit of coaching, but it was a lot of curriculum work and things like that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so as you've noticed a trend, all these moves meant I got different opportunities to try out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, let's see, after Minnesota, we moved to... Attleboro, Massachusetts. Ah, okay, getting closer. <laughs> getting closer. Yeah. Um, and I worked with um, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as a national consultant, working with schools and districts all across the country. So when they, when a district implements a new. Uh, program one of their textbooks or programs, mm -hmm. you'd fly out and introduce everyone to how the how the book works and how the exercises work and which sections line up with which. And that was part of it. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest part of my work, though, was actually not connected to program at all. Mm. It was focused on instructional practice. Ah. So regardless of the textbook you were using, we would talk about things like building discourse and rich tasks into your classroom, um, asking good questions to help move learning. Mm -hmm. So I, I was with them for a number of years, mm -hmm. um, and I was based out of my homes and traveled a lot, so it didn't really matter where we lived. Mm -hmm. uh, we then moved to Kansas City for a year. I'm on six. You're on six. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and so we were in Kansas City for uh, just a year, and I stayed with that last position, and then we moved out here to New Hampshire. Uh -huh. and, and That's we had, where we are now. We are, we're there now. Seven. And uh, what I'm really excited about with this job here in Pelham is to focus on a single district, a single school, mm -hmm. and really get to dig in with teachers to, to sort of see the, the growth both in them and, and with students. I remember when the position was approved by voters and uh, we started looking, and I thought, well, you know, we can hope. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, there's no way we're going to find someone with uh, significant co math coaching experience. And I remember when uh, Jessica Van Vranken came over and said, you are not going to <laughs> believe the candidate we have. Um, and so uh, walk me through now, because uh, I think it is hard for for uh, people in the community to picture. Yeah. So what's your what's your typical day, typical week like now that you're uh, not flying around the country anymore? <laughs> Thankfully, but in in one school, one district. Uh, uh, th I mean, it's a big school, but w what do you do over there every day? Well, I think the first thing to understand is that an instructional coach's role is all about learning, and not focusing so much on students as an interventionist might, but mm -hmm. focused on teacher learning. Mm -hmm. So what are the instructional practices 
and the good strategies that we're helping to grow within our teachers, mm -hmm. so building their capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, this year in the elementary, as you know, we have a new math program, yep. Reveal, mm -hmm. and so a big part of my work has been helping teachers make sense of how does re what is Reveal? What are the strategies within Reveal? How do I implement this effectively in my classroom? Yeah. And that looks a lot like sitting to plan with teachers, mm -hmm. looking at assessments, mm -hmm. because we're maybe assessing in ways we haven't before, mm -hmm. so let's make it accessible to kids. Do you have a for instance on that? I always think it's helpful because um, uh, as people in schools, we mm -hmm. think about assessments a lot. Um, but if you're not in the school and you're just watching this, like what's different? I mean, uh, I, I picture people saying, I took math tests. It was uh, my quizzes had ten questions, mm -hmm. uh, each with a single answer, and I had to put a box around it. And my tests had a hundred questions, each with a single answer that I put a box around. So mm -hmm. isn't it just that? It is not just that. It is not. So just that. one of the big shifts in math instruction, not just here in Pelham that we're trying to make, but across the country, is shifting math class to be a place where thinking and reasoning is happening. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to understand. Well, our assessment needs to reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. And so we've been using the assessments from Reveal, mm -hmm. but we have to look at the way we're teaching in kind of a different way. Mm -hmm. So it's not just 10 or 20 questions, computation, no word problem, no context, just get an answer. But instead, it's really about thinking and reasoning. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, um, I have three rows of six apples, you know, in each row, how many apples? Mm -hmm. It's, I have... 18 apples arranged in rows and columns. How many rows, how many columns could I have? So that's, uh, I've seen these up on bulletin boards, mm -hmm. these sorts of questions, because that really messes with your head for a second, because I go to three and six, but you could also go to, I'm doing this live and I shouldn't, nine and two. Yeah, absolutely. Or Eight, 18 and one. 18 and one, thank you, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so that's the more kind of open-ended, so that you're, they're Correct. thinking about groupings instead of just. Uh, it's still important to to know uh, the facts, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to do multiple versions or think of it more flexibly. Exactly, and yeah. I think flexible thinking is a really good way to put it, and recognizing that. We still want our students to develop computational fluency. Mm -hmm. I still want them to understand how to find an answer, mm -hmm. but that doesn't come in the first lesson, right? Yeah. That's We develop strategies to get us there efficiently, mm -hmm. um, and efficient doesn't start with, I'm never efficient when I learn something the first time. Yeah. Um, so it's developing the strategies that get me to efficiency. Yeah, yeah. That's good. And so one of the things that I think is helpful about these these little programs is um, if there's parents or grandparents, community members watching that want to be helpful, mm -hmm. and particularly in math, particularly at the elementary school, it can get tricky. Yep. So what advice might you have for a parent who's like, I want to help, but I, I just don't even know how to get in there? Yeah, I think that there are sort of three things. The right. first is to just understand that the, there's no such thing as new math. But there are new approaches to the mm -hmm. way we teach it. So really shifting our thinking to math class is a place where we think and reason, mm -hmm. and answers come as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Not math class is a place to get answers and then go home. Mm -hmm. So just making sense of that for yourself might help understand the strategies you're seeing coming home. Mm -hmm. I think the other piece is to recognize that a culture we're trying to build here, um, I mean, hopefully all over the country, but I can only control what I can control. Yep. <laughs> this um, is the place I care about. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that every person is a math person, mm -hmm. even if I don't love it, oh. even if I struggle. So uh, so if uh, someone says, well, I hated math as a kid, yeah. um, that, uh, that, that parent, too, can be helpful? That parent can absolutely be helpful. Right. So recognize there's no such thing as a math gene. Mm -hmm. So that get that misconception out of your mind. Uh -huh. uh, we can't pass along our struggles genetically to our students, but we absolutely can pass on our attitudes mm -hmm. and the ways that we perceive struggle in math mm -hmm. because our, our children are always watching mm -hmm. to sort of emulate what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think the way we frame I hated math or I wasn't good at math is yeah, I struggled in math, but you know what? I know that if I work hard enough, I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think being honest with kids about your struggles and then recognizing, but there are a lot of other things in my life that I struggled with mm -hmm. and I had to really work at them to get better. Yeah. Math is just another thing I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Um, the, the word yet is big for me in yep. that <laughs> sentence um, because it's like, oh, I'm still open to 
uh, I can still get better at this. Yeah. Um, and uh, the way the, the way I think of this is um, the idea of a growth mindset, mm-hmm. um, which is there's no fixed uh, set of some people good at math, some people not. Right. Uh, and we've all learned, all, all the adults, all, every parent I encounter has had something where they've struggled, uh, disliked something, but uh, stuck with it enough so they ended up loving it. Right. Yeah, and uh, what I'm hearing is that can be true of math as well. Totally. And I I actually don't need everyone as much as I would love them to. I don't need everyone to love math. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love it, but that doesn't have to happen. What I actually want for everyone is to recognize that you're capable of learning and growing in math, Mm -hmm. even when it's not your favorite. Yeah. And I think there's a, the third sort of practical piece of this advice I would give is uh, about homework. So okay. everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> yes, especially math homework. That's right. Yeah, give me some advice because uh, <laughs> I need it. Yeah, so when homework comes home and students struggle, yeah. I think there are, uh, sometimes our instinct is to, let's just power through it and then tears happen or it becomes... I'm going to show you how I learned it and just so you can get your answer. Yeah. But then it can become a battle with the child. Like, that's not how my teacher did it. Oh. But I don't understand how your teacher did it. So And it becomes very frustrating for all involved. Yes, I've been exactly there. <laughs> so I think a better move is uh-huh. maybe to sit with the child and say, okay, you know what? I'm not worried about you getting a correct answer. Instead, let's make a list of all the things you do understand about the problem. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about the things you don't understand. And when they say, I don't get any of it, well, that's not true. Maybe Mm -hmm. I understand that the problem is about, it's a word problem about apples. Mm -hmm. So write down, they understand it's about apples. Mm -hmm. They understand she had five to start. They Mm -hmm. understand that she got some more. Mm -hmm. And then they, they understand there's eight. So I understand the story of the problem. That's a lot. What I don't understand is how do I figure out that missing part? Mm -hmm. At the very least, sending that back with your child instead of just a page full of answers that are right because maybe mom and dad nudged it that way Mm -hmm. or are wrong because the child was frustrated with it, the the teacher now has some information to say, okay, they understood the story of the problem. Now here's how I could work with them and support them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's – and I think it will help alleviate – frustration and and the arguments and hopefully the tears and also help to build the idea that even in the middle of my struggle there are things I understand so continuing to build that growth mindset yeah yeah boy that uh that lesson's helpful not just in mathematics even in the middle of my struggle there are things I understand Mm -hmm. yeah that's really good good life lesson (laughs) exactly exactly I'm gonna have that uh, carved into my desk Good. That's good. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank uh, you. And um, I'm uh, am going to be talking with you uh, off camera later about uh, working on my own first grade math lesson. I know. I'm super excited. I am too. <laughs> and I'm quite nervous because there will be a lot of struggle as I try and uh, sort that out. But So thank you for being here. Even in the middle of your struggles, there are things you understand. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. So thank you. This was a, a fun uh, episode. It's nice to be able to talk. Uh, teaching and learning as part of uh, Pelham School District today. And I just want to remind everybody, uh, February 7th, 7 p.m. is the deliberative session. Uh, It's at uh, Sherburn Hall, and um, look forward to uh, seeing all the citizens there. Thanks.